these wicked scholars, I hate it how they're hiding in their closets, hiding behind their degrees in fake Greek and Hebrew amateur interpretations, and they feel like they're invincible. That's a bully, man. I don't like that. That's why your pastor, he slams really hard. He slams really hard when somebody tries to hurt weak, weaker people. Amen. I really slam that hard. I really slam that hard. I disdain that. Okay, then. So, we believe that the King James Bible is perfect. It is the only perfect, pure Word of God. Why don't I go by the modern Bibles? Why am I KJV only? Well, it's because Nestle Allen's book made me KJV only. What? You're serious? What? Is, is, isn't it against the King James Bible? Well, when you actually take their book and read it, it'll motivate you to become KJV only. It's going to motivate you to become KJV only. The way that they give their readings is just, is just shocking to me. Now, we're going to look at several passages. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And then we're going to look at Psalms chapter 12. And then we're going to look at Revelation chapter 22. So I want you to go to these three passages. And while you're turning over there, I'm going to be reading some things from our dear friend, Nessel Allen. So Nessel Allen, they give some quotes here which pretty much disturbed me. And it really disturbed me and it made me KJV only. Now, these scholars are going to act like you can't tell us what to do. You can't correct us because you don't know Greek and Hebrew. Well, Nessel Allen will beg to differ, actually. So I'm going to give some quotations right here, what, what they say, okay? Let's read some few quotes right here. Now, what, what makes me KJV only? Because Nessel Allen, one, admits, they first admit that modern Bible versions are Roman Catholic. What? No, 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 no. Yeah, they did, okay? Now, you heard me teach, you heard me give the quotation in the last teaching, so I'm going to give it again in this teaching. Modern versions are Catholics. Quote, the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So you'll see right here that this is their text. It's been Catholic cooperated. Catholics were involved. That's one. All right, here's another thing right here. They admitted that your KJV Bible has majority of manuscript evidences. Well, uh, uh, don't majority of the manuscripts support the modern Bibles? No, it's, it's actually KJV. Yeah. KJV. Amen. Wait, why would they go by the minority of witnesses then, Pastor? Well, it's very simple. It's because they use the excuse, it's older. Yeah. It's older. That's a lie, okay? Always Sinaiticus Vaticanus. Now, I can do this, okay? I'm, I'm not going to do it in this teaching, but let me give a brief outline why that argument is folly, okay? One, if you look up Sinaiticus you'll, and Vaticanus, you'll see uh, additions. You'll see deliberate tampering over there. All you have to do, you can get it online, I, I, I bet you still, because some of my friends got it. Some of the preachers got it. You get one yourself, and look how the pages differed in colors, okay? See how they differed in colors and in wording. And the scri scribal writing is newer compared to the older ones. So it's been tampered. Anyway, let's call that a conspiracy theory for James White's sake, okay? Let's please him, all right? Number two, let's give a different argument right here. Number two, you got the Syriac Peshitta, and you also got the Old Latin that are second century manuscripts. And this is supported by many people who actually studied about the Waldensians during the medieval era, these people who encountered these people, that these were all the way to second century. Edward F. Hills, scholar, who has contacts and relations with Harvard, Princeton, etc. That doctor pointed out that there is a papyri manuscript, I think he called it Boharic or something like that, but that is also in competition with other papyrus and second century manuscripts as well. 
Not only that, you got Alexandrian manuscripts themselves that actually support KJV readings compared to modern Bibles. That's given that a different video. Not only that, you also have papyri manuscripts that support KJV readings, not the modern versions themselves. There are certain passages. So see, uh, that's just a short, short answer for older is better. That's just nonsense, okay? There are older things out there. There are two more arguments against that as well, but I'm not going to give it. Okay, but let's give out the point right here. It's majority of witnesses. Why is that? They admitted it right here. Okay, so the symbol they use here is TR. So right here, TR indicates, quote, indicates readings supported by the majority of all manuscripts. Quote, right here, okay, page 55. Always including manuscripts of the Koine type. Koine Greek, isn't that what we're trying to go with the New Testament? The original Koine Greek. Yeah. Right? Then why don't you go by the majority of all of that? Yeah. On the world. These guys. So these guys, they actually admit that the TR manuscript, it is the majority of all manuscript. Really, Pastor, is it truly the majority of all manuscripts? Yeah. So... This is so dishonest of them. So what they did was that because this thing is so big, they have to put it as TR. Yeah. So when you look at their manuscript evidence right here, yeah. you're going to find out that, oh, it seems like the majority of manuscripts right here, including ancient ones, support the Alexandrian text reading, the modern version reading. But no, be, because when it conflicts with TR right here, they put fewer manuscript numbers right here. Do you know why? Their excuse for TR is that it's too big. Well, yeah, no kidding. Do you know how big it is? It's this whole page right here of TR manuscripts. This whole page. 2, 3, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14, 15, 18, 20, 21, 23, 2, 25, 27, 29, 30, 32, 34, 36, 37, 39, 40, 47, 44, 47, 49, 50, 52, to 55, 57, 58, 60, 63, 65, 66, 68, 70, 73, to 78. And that's line number one. And there, how many lines are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. There are 26 lines, and I only went through one line right here. <laughs> this fills out this whole page. You see all these small little numbers right here? This is nuts. This is all the manuscript for your KJV. Oh, why, why are we KJV only? Because you showed me, dummy. You dummy. You showed me. That's why I'm KJV only. Majority of witnesses. The, and you're going to go by two manuscripts that are very suspicious? Oh, my goodness, these people. Very idea. Dishonesty of scholars, man. Dishonesty of scholars. If there's anything I cannot stand, is a dishonest scholar, man. I cannot stand that. Well, you can't tell me what to do. Who does so-called Dr. Gene Kim tell me what to do? Well, you guys told me that I can tell you what to do. What? What are you talking about? Okay, let me read right here. You know what you, you, know what you guys said right here? Now, don't get mad at me, okay? Stop foaming at the mouth, okay? Calm down. Take 10. Take three deep breaths. Pray a little bit, okay, for 10 seconds. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you got your breath back? Okay, this is what you guys said, okay? Finally, a word of thanks is due the scholars who have reviewed and criticized our work. We have learned much from them. And we earnestly request that they and all our readers will continue to contribute toward the improvement of this edition, that the cause of New Testament scholarship may be advanced. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah, amen. I want New Testament scholarship. I'm talking about genuine Greek and Hebrew scholarship to improve. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. You guys said that at your, let's see right here, very first pages of first pages right here. Your forward. You said that in your forward right there. Now don't get mad and calm down, okay? So I'm just, do, so don't get mad at me. Don't criticize me. Don't make fun of me. I'm just doing what you guys wanted me to do, what you requested me to do. I have a, the freedom and the right to critique. If you got the freedom and the right to critique this book, I got the freedom and the right to critique you. I show zero respect to that. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. You know what the problem with these, you know what the problem with these wicked men are? When you, whenever you bring up a 
corruption in the modern Bibles, this is their getaway card. Listen now. Their getaway card is, well, you can't really blame them. It wasn't a deliberate tampering. It wasn't a deliberate tampering because there was a Greek word that was missing up a certain line. So that's the reason why they didn't think that it was God, but that it was he manifested in the flesh. Show them John 1, 18 about the begotten God. Well, you can under, understand that it was a, because the words are just so crammed in together or whatever. So it's not like they deliberately made Jesus a begotten God. These were sincere men, sincere scholars. You can't just get on them by telling them that they were deliberately corrupting the word of God and there was some evil conspiracy behind it. Here, you know what, then what you get on them? What you get on them is this. It seems like to me then that they're, uh, then you don't believe in corrupting the word of God. There is no such thing then. Mm, yeah. Who is God talking about then? Uh -huh. While you justify every Alexandrian scholar during those days, Paul warned you before Alexandria, Egypt, about these people who were currently corrupting the Bible. Okay. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Then who is he talking about? Huh? Who is he talking about corrupting the word of God? I mean, if it's, not, if it's not the NIV, ASV, the NESV, and the Alexandrian manuscripts, then can you please tell me who? At least say that the KJV translators were deliberately corrupting the Word of God. At least honestly say that the Byzantine manuscripts, there were people who deliberately corrupted the Word of God. At least be honest and say that. They don't want to say it. Because what they want to say is that every Bible is fine, whatever you prefer. So they do not believe final authority of perfect Bible, see? That's their problem. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. For we are not as who? Many. many. Wait, wait. How many? Many. 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 This, is a, this is not a widespread conspiracy. Uh, Paul thought so. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Paul thought so. And he knew more Hebrew than you, I bet you. <laughs> the original Hebrew that time. He knew the original Greek to that time too because he was writing in Greek. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Look at Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Then who is he talking about adding to his words and subtracting to his words then? Who is he talking about? And there's got to be many of them too. It has to be a widespread conspiracy. Has to be. Why? Because the Bible says so. Bible says so. Look at Revelation chapter 22. Oh, it's only talking about the book of Revelation, says Judas White. Okay, then. Then you actually said that the KJV and the Greek manuscripts or the Greek manuscripts that the KJV came from, there, was, there were problems with the book of Revelation. So at least be honest and say that they were corrupting the book of Revelation yeah. in subtracting or adding to Revelation. Yeah. I didn't say the whole Bible. I said Revelation. Yeah. See, you wouldn't even admit that. You want to admit that? Dirty dog, I caught you, man. Yeah. Amen. Let's look at verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. You got to be careful of this idea that uh, the manuscripts with fewer readings is far better. Hey, Paul, John warned you about taking words away. Well, well, that's only the book of Revelation. Okay, then the book of Revelation will say. They were taking out things. Not only that, John warned you about adding as well. They think that, oh, when they were adding things, that is corruption. Wait a minute, no. It's got to be adding and subtracting. And guess what? The Byzantine manuscripts is a perfect manuscript family that shows that balance. Different from the Western manuscripts that added more and the Alexandrian manuscripts who subtracted more. Yeah. And the Byzantine family text is where your King James Bible came from. Now let's do Psalms 12. Do we all know that verse? Psalms 12, 6 and 7. For the words of the Lord are pure words. The silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. Preserve them from who? This generation. Doesn't matter what modern generation we're in, folks. 
I don't care if you claim to be a Greek and Hebrew scholar of this 20th century, 21st century, with all your computers, Greek and Hebrew lexicons, and whatever new manuscript you find, from this generation, God will preserve his word forever. There's nothing you can do about it. Cry and whine all you want. Publish another book criti criticizing the King James Bible. We're ready for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that your book has been magnified and glorified above all else, and that the wisdom of man have been stomped down and belittled. I made a promise to you, God, ten years ago, that if you would give me worldwide access, I would raise you up high and make every other belief of man folly and foolish to the ground. I pray that I have kept my word and you are honored and pleased by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everybody.